What's going on guys? Welcome back. Bit of a different video today because uh, we're not actually out doing any work. I'm just running errands, pretty much getting all this stuff to the machine shop, getting uh, some parts and dropping up, dropping off and picking up Eva stuff pretty much. Uh -huh. So yeah, at this point today is the day that they brought in all the new, all the second lot of coronavirus restrictions on uh, uh, things like tattoo parlors and uh, all that sort of stuff. So getting pretty scary, getting pretty close to lockdown. Uh, obviously exercising extreme caution today as I get around and drop all this stuff off and, and get make stuff happen. Keeping my uh, social distancing and definitely sanitizing my hands after every interaction. But uh, I don't know, it's, it's hard. I would like to just stay at home, but obviously uh, I still have bills to pay and I'm in a position where I can still work as long as I exercise extreme caution. As I said in the last video, Zach and I have talked about it while we're doing this collaboration, while we're both working on this together. We are both sort of exercising extreme caution and ensuring that we keep our uh, social interactions very minimal. Uh, that way, you know, we're both just going sort of between home and the workshop and we have very little risk of spreading. So, you know, we've got, we've both got bills to pay, things to do. I've got a partner at home that's 36 weeks pregnant. Um, and so of all people, I would very much like to not get this, uh, this virus and spread it. Obviously I have a lot to, lot to lose, but at the same time, I need to ensure that I keep a roof over their head. So uh, it's a bit, a bit of a hard one in the system that's been created by by this this world is that, you know, we can't afford to all just not go to work. So I know there's a lot of people out there that are struggling out through this because uh, they're in that exact position where they can't work and they have no support. So it's, uh, it's super scary. So feeling for everyone. Hope you're all staying safe. That's the main thing. Hope you're all staying healthy. And uh, hopefully we can all sort of come through it on the other side together a bit better. So first point of call today is uh, heading to East Coast Engine Center in Nambour to uh, drop off Zach's head to get it crack tested and resurfaced. Or also dropping off uh, a cam and a crank, which uh, both just need a bit of a linish for that small block that Rex pulled down. Uh, so we'll do that first. Quick in and out, drop stuff off, sanitize my hands and get out of there. <laughs> Rightio, so drop off that head to the machine shop there. And uh, they're actually going to pull out that JB welder put in and weld it up properly for not very much money. So I told them definitely to do that. Uh, that sort of just gives it a little bit more peace of mind to know that it's actual proper, properly put everything in there that it needs rather than JB weld. Although JB weld would have been better than nothing, I think. Uh, but that's that's good and it, not for very much money. So that's going to be awesome. It just might distort the uh, the valve seats um, just there on, on that side. So when we get it back, I'll just, uh, I'll relap them and just as long as they lap up all right, we'll be right. Uh, if they don't lap up all right, I'll have to cut the seats again or grind the seats again, which is not a big deal. But just to do the two seats, that'll be fine. Uh, definitely better to have that extra bit of material in there though before surfacing. So that'll be awesome. They are also gonna do Zach's flywheel for me. I was gonna get, I got another mate that works at a, at a clutch shop to uh, that does a lot of machining on my flywheels, but so he would have been a little bit cheaper if I went there, but I figure it's, uh, seeing as I'm dropping the head at the East Coast Engine Centre anyway, I may as well get them to do it. And uh, that's one less place I've got to go today. So again, just exercising that extreme caution where possible. So that's uh, actually going to be probably all I drop off today now because uh, it's that stuff's not going to be ready probably till at least Friday or Monday. Uh, which means, yeah, I won't, I won't have it for the next time we're out there at the workshop. Um, the stuff that I'm getting from Repco for, for Zach is not uh, not sort of necessary for the next thing we need to do, which will probably be on Friday, which will be get that bottom end back together. So I don't particularly need to go to Repco at this stage either by the looks of things. So thinking about maybe just flagging that until uh, the head's ready and I'll go to Repco the same day that I actually go to pick up the head and flywheel. That way I've got everything I need at the same time uh, rather than run around to places I don't particularly need to go at this stage when I don't have to go there. So. Uh, that might be it for this little intro. We might pick it up tomorrow. I did ask while I was there and I told him that I uh, did try and weld it up, but it didn't work out for me. And he did sort of explain that you got to get real savage with them and grind out heaps of the material. Otherwise you get way too much porosity, which you, you get what happened to me where the, the pool, the head doesn't really start to pull. It doesn't accept the filler. Um, it doesn't really create a pool. It's sort of because of all the porosity and how much dirtiness there is because of such a porous cast. Uh, you, it just doesn't work out. So I sort of already knew that, but you know, given the fact that it wasn't my head and I don't have a spare RB25 head just lying around, I didn't really want to go getting too savage grinding at it and then uh, clearing it up, especially where it was. So uh, leave it to the professionals, uh, but they're going to do it cheap enough anyway. So that's going to work out sweet. So everyone's happy. Everyone works out great. We continue on our merry way.
All right, guys, so I totally forgot to ask while I was there, but I did give them a call and uh, they're actually going to drill and helicoil that stud out for us as well. Saves me having to do it. It's, um, they're going to do it for cheaper than I can buy the kit to do M10. So I may as well just let them do it rather than me screw around with it. So that'll be good. So that means the head will come back pretty much ready to go, welded up, surfaced. All I'll have to do is just double check those few valves, make sure the seats are okay. Uh, and if we have to, we'll just have to grind them seats out and uh, relap them. So. That's pretty much the best possible outcome. It's all pretty cheap work, so <laughs> pretty stoked with that. Going on, guys, uh, continuing on from yesterday. I am out of the workshop today, uh, but not here to do actually any work. Actually, the 31 is sold. So I am taking that down to Archerfield today. I uh, just thought I'd sort of film the demise, or well, not the demise, but the departure of my beloved 31 and see if I can make us all cry. Anyway, in the meantime, Rex couldn't handle the fact that the first engine to be built in the engine room could have been an RB, so he's uh, had a bit to hurry up and he's got his chef in here. Too many cams. <laughs> so he's uh, very happy that it's going to be the first the first engine to be built in this room is now going to be a small block. Well, Which I guess is kind of fitting because it's pretty much where it all started. Yeah, well at the very least it's the first one in here, <laughs> even if it doesn't get built first. Turned up all nice. I even managed to. So you managed to press that rod off that yeah, piston without killing that it. Rod off. It took a lot of patience, and yep. it was quite a risk still yep. to. Oh, it's a very sad day, but also kind of a relief, especially at the moment with all this coronavirus stuff, because I sort of need this money to uh, pay bills. <laughs> Which, uh, you know, it sucks. But anyway, uh, the new owners want the stock driver's seat put back in. But they're also going to take the bucket seat, apparently, which is a pain in the ass because it's really hard to find one this size. But whatever. That's just got to go in the back. We've got to swap out for the driver's seat. Uh, and then I've pretty much just got to take off my plates. Obviously, no my plates do not go with the car because it is not registered. And then load it up and take it down because it's all ready because I got it ready the other day. So Rex and I are sort of just uh, measuring up and having a look at how we're going to do our LSR 31. Uh, what we're going to use, where we're going to run our exhaust. We're figuring out our exhaust primaries and uh, if we can get the sort of ideal length in primaries, collectors and, and everything else and where we can get mufflers in so we can drive Archie and all that sort of stuff. So trying to fit <laughs> the uh, optimal length exhaust with mufflers in one of these cars when it's going to be fairly low is a bit of a pain. We talked about maybe cutting out a lot of this bottom floor, but the problem with that is... Um, if in future, for any reason, we did want to go and compete in things like high tech and that, um, if we did, did ever cage it, you're not supposed to have a modified floor pan except for the trans tunnel. You're allowed to modify a trans tunnel, but your floor pan's meant to stay the same. So we would like to keep it pretty stock if we can. We are uh, the other day after Zach left, we actually mocked up the sump. Sorry for the wind noise, guys. I'm on my phone because I'm traveling, but we actually did mock up the sump in the um, silo just to see how it was uh, sort of going to fit. We, um, we've done pretty good measurements. We reckon pretty well we can modify the uh, the engine cross member and actually fit a stock sump on an LS in there pretty, pretty fine. Very challenging is going to be this side for the pipes we're going to have to make, but it's sort of a given for a V8 in a car like this. Um, I'm hoping that the starter fits in there. We'll find out. I'm sure there's something we can do to get around it. But uh, we're definitely not looking at converting to a left-hand starter, so be leaving it stock. But anyway, we are, we're making moves to get there. We're pretty keen to start this build very soon. So like after having to sell mine and Rex selling this thing after we put in so much effort to build it and he never got to actually drift it, uh, we're both sort of, we both sort of really want to get in and get this LS31 done so we can sort of drive. It would be really nice for Rex to sort of do a bit more driving because he only ever has drifted this one time. Uh, so he's done, he's done little to... to almost no drifting and um like obviously he's done heaps of driving uh skids pad burnouts power skids definitely can steer so it'd be really cool to actually get into the track in a car that's pretty well set up and let him go ham and uh you know aspirated v8 aspirated VL, v8 is much more his style anyway so now nah, so we're really keen to sort of get that 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 done considering he never actually got to drive this car after all the effort he put in so plus we're looking at um at this point, it's sort of really looking like this coronavirus, we might end up going into full lockdown. Uh, we've talked about it and we've pretty much decided that uh, if we're gonna go into full lockdown, we may as well have something to do. So we wanna try and get as much parts together as we need for this thing so that uh, if we do end up in lockdown, we've got a car to build um, while we're sitting around doing not much else. So uh, yeah, so we're trying to sort that out. But anyway, I better get started on my car because I'm gonna have to leave 
fairly soon. Planning another 31 build sort of eases the pain of knowing I have to leave this one all alone again today. No one to look after it. <laughs> no, it is it is meant to be getting dropped at Archie, is what I've been instructed to do. So I assume that uh, Luke's pretty much going to be looking after the car until these people come over uh, on their holiday for drifting it. So uh, hopefully run into Luke today, catch up with him a bit. But yeah, I'm sure to get looked after pretty well and sent. Another thing I'm really looking forward to in this next build is, uh, I don't know if a lot of you who remember actually when I started this build, I had a lot of plans to do uh, like aero um, and heaps of other stuff to the car. For those of you who caught sort of the end of the build, I ended up getting the louvers off that silhouette that we got for Rex's parts car. So I've got louvers there. Um, I've still got all the stuff that I wanted to make aero out of uh, for this car. I haven't really touched on exactly what they came off. I was sort of keeping it pretty quiet until I went and did it. But this car ended up just that low that I'd never bothered putting any aero or anything on it. But the, the LS car, I'm not planning on making it stupid low like this one is because it just it's too many problems for a like a track dedicated car that you want to be reliable uh, as i found with this one with you know punching dints and sumps and catching lines and just it's it's awesome having a car that low but at the same time it's a pain in the ass so this uh, ls car because of the way we want to run the exhaust and everything it's going to be pretty standard height uh on bigger wheels just to make it easier for us uh for that reason i'm gonna yeah make sure i put on my aero um and my louvers and stuff i'm gonna put the drag wing back on it but i'm actually gonna weld up and paint the drag wing properly so it looks acceptable and uh so it's gonna be like all of the things that i still wanted to do to mine or that i had planned to do to mine that i never sort of got around to and never got to because of the way it was built i get to continue and do that on the next car um, we get to build another 31 which is you know cool after this much effort in these two and having to sell them it's gonna be cool to have another 31 and it's gonna be cool to for x to get to the track and sort of have a go at drifting in one that's pretty well set up and got a fair bit of power so uh yeah we're, I'm, I'm keen as so this is i know we talk about builds or specifically me i talk about builds and i plan builds a lot but obviously i lack the funds uh to just get in and get them done which is a pain because i have the time and i have the knowledge and i have the uh, ability to do it all i just don't have the funds but uh, this this LS31, like between selling these two cars, we've got enough coin sort of left over to get a lot of the parts we need. We've already got a lot of the parts we need. Uh, it's definitely something that's going to be happening fairly quick. Not like all these other builds that I keep talking about that keep sort of just not happening because I don't have the funds. So this LS build will actually be one of those things that it, uh, goes ahead pretty quick. So I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be sick. Stock seat acquired. Needs a good clean, but stock seat acquired. So yeah, just this new build, like imagine the drag wing back on it, but painted color coded with the car. Louvers, uh, I'm thinking D-Max reverse bonnet vent. Ah, oh, sorry, not D-Max, well D-Max style, but from K-Mac, because I'm cheap. <laughs> but yeah, like K-Mac bonnet vent. Um, these louvers, like that drag wing, all color coded, all blacked out, because uh, we don't have that many good trims left, because we use them all for Rexes, we're gonna black out all the trims as well, so. Car's gonna be essentially like completely blacked out. Then with side skirts and a front lip, um, I reckon it's gonna be like full Mad Max sort of vibe going on. And I reckon it's gonna be cool. And it's gonna be cheap, easy to paint, easy to repair, and perfect for a drift car. <laughs> Stay here, car. Stop that, there we go. Righto, seat is swapped out, stock one's back in there. Chucked me uh, my trusty bride rep in the back there for them. It's gonna be sad to see that thing go, that thing's been in with me my whole drifting career. Anyway, time for a better quality one anyway for the next car. Plus if me and Rex are gonna have to share it, I'll probably have to get a medium, uh, which I can deal with, that's fine. All right, so, gotta go hook up my trailer, get that sorted out. Potentially the last load up of this car. Now I say potentially because as you all know my history with this car is that it tends to gravitate towards me so I might end up with it back. 
But anyway, this tyre seems to be a bit soft, so I just thought I'd back it up and check all the tyres. And uh, while I'm at it, may as well check the trailer tyres and the Falcon tyres as well, since I haven't checked any of them for quite a bit of time. So, time to give them all of it, just a, a quick check. Max is over here pulling these heads down. Having a grand old time. Yeah. How are they looking, mate? They're just a little bit fucking stuck from sitting. They look good. Actual like, seats and valves look good though. Yeah, yeah, because we obviously did these heads when I put it together. But yep. Yeah, they look great. I'm not even going to bother um, lapping them. Yep. Just clean up the chambers a bit and put it back together. Pretty much. Now they're all brand new uh, valve stem seals. and. Yep. Your springs, she's all new. All 10,000 Ks old. Yeah, it's just been sitting there. So pretty much the story was this Chev went into the Land Cruiser with the manual behind it for oh, about eight months. It was in there and um, didn't do a lot of Ks. Was uh, converted to Holly EF, like Holly Sniper fuel injection. So it was an injected 350. But I uh, had a few minor issues with the Holly Sniper, which they were pretty minor, but at the time they left Rex stranded in places he really didn't want to be. So it really pissed him off. <laughs> And uh, eventually he just got the shits and decided to fucking go and buy a uh, LS1 donor and rip the Chev out. And so became the eight month process of twin turbo LS1ing the uh, Land Cruiser, which we didn't expect to take that long at the start. But well, The catalyst was, I didn't like the gearing of the manual Toyota box and you always got the 80 series like fifth gear. The overdrive's only about 0.9. Like yeah, they're pretty much, between four and five is pretty much useless. I don't even know yeah, why they have it. It's just awful. So it was very much... Uh, I was looking at going auto. Not to mention even just this motor aspirated fuel injected the way it was, was starting to make that gearbox a bit sad. The gearbox had done, you know, like 450,000 Ks or whatever it was. Yeah. So. And uh, by the time I looked at putting an auto in it, I needed a computer to control it one way or another. So I'd buy, buy, put a 460 unit or something like that. I'd have to buy an aftermarket controller that was a couple of grand. Yeah. And I was like, why bother after all that? Just, just LS1. Put, just put an LS in it and it yep. can do the whole lot, so. And then that uh, snowballed into turbo, twin turbo, <laughs> yeah. 480, uh, and here we are today. Yeah. <laughs> and it's still snowballing into iron block, flex fuel. <laughs> I'm not claiming that it was... Uh, <laughs> not stupid. That it was not silly. <laughs> all right, we're all checked, tires pumped up. We are ready to roll. Potentially last voyage. How sad. So another thing to mention guys, uh, we've actually already picked out a cam for this LS package too. Um, we went there and picked out a cam the other day. It's pretty angry, pretty, pretty lumpy. It's going to be a pretty tough sounding rig, especially the way it's going to look and sound. It's going to give off for like a real Mad Max vibe, I reckon. Um, so we've already picked out a cam for it. We've also decided we're probably just going to use a T56 instead of um, putting my TR6060 in it. Simply because we've been thinking about it and um, by the time I come to do the Crusader, the only thing that's really going to be in this car that I particularly really want to keep for the Cressy that I can't replace too easily is that TR6060. And that's just because it is, you know, the stronger box. It's what I really wanted for the Cressy, especially being boosted. So we don't particularly need the TR6060 for the aspirated combo. So we're probably just going to chuck in the TV6 that I rebuilt in preparation for the Cressy. We're going to use that TV6 instead. Uh, so not to mention, like, you know, don't really need the TV6 for the aspirated combo. They're a little bit smaller, which means they're a lot easier to fit in the small R31 tunnel. And they're a lot cheaper and easier to find to replace. So, makes more sense just to use a T56. That way there's nothing really in this LS combo that I particularly can't just replace for when the Cressy comes, if we decide we want to leave the uh, LS R31 complete car. Uh, so, you know, makes things just a bit easier. We've got T56, so may as well do that. Uh, and you know, when it comes to the Cressy, if I want to get another LS combo donor with ECU, whatever. It's going to be really easy to find. It's really easy to replace and uh, it doesn't really affect the cost of that car as well because I'll just replace it like for like and leave the cost as it is. So as well as the cam, we've decided we're going to do just like full head and cam, uh, like full head and cam package. So it'll be trying to upgrade lifters. We've got springs. We're going to do a cam uh, and that's pretty much going to be the setup. We'll do fresh valve stem seals, um, like flat the valves, get the heads all nice, but we're going to leave the bottom end as it is. Uh, we're going to make sure that we can modify the cross member to run a stock sump. That way we can buy one of those like Aeroflow make a bolt in uh, baffle system for the LS sump, which just helps a lot when you're drifting, you know, sloshing around. So we're going to run just a baffle in the sump. Apart from that, we're going to leave the bottom end stock. Just put a new timing chain on it when we do the cam. Um, so it'll be all fresh top end, stock bottom end. It's 200,000 Ks old. So with this cam, the way we're looking to do it, we're hoping to sort of, it'll, we should make around 
that between 380 to 400 wheel horsepower aspirated and uh because it's going to be stock bottom end that's done a fair few k's we might even chuck on like a 150 shot of giggle gas or something for things like power cruise and that just to liven it up a bit you know if we can uh chuck a 150 shot of giggle gas in it and make 500 wheel for things like power cruise and that that'll be pretty staunch so no it'll be a good thing i'm looking forward to it it's gonna be sick so much cleaning so much cleaning, so much cleaning. Oh yes, this building engine is very glamorous. Oh, rolling out for the last time. Sad state of affairs. Oh, here we are. Potentially the last time I'll unload this car. Oh, sad. Holy crap, this is way more savage in the flesh than I thought. <laughs> Oh, that's hectic. This is going to be so much fun. Such a shame that uh, this whole virus has gone and screwed everything up for everyone. It's a shame that they put so much money into actually sorting this out and almost straight away they've had to shut down the, uh, the park. So I'm sure it's uh, not good times for them as it is for everyone else. So we've got Nico drop there and huge big bank now. It's going to be so much fun. I just can't believe how much angle there actually is on this bank in person. Photos really don't do it justice. I'm sure this filming doesn't do it justice. It actually looks crazy. Oh, keen as to get this LS31 done so I can come here and drive as soon as it's reopened. Me and Rex can come attack this bank. Next to the big wags. So that's it, 31's gone, deal's done. Very, very sad, but also uh, very stoked to get that money, particularly at this time. Um, so lucky that, that the ball for that deal was already ro rolling before this whole crisis hit and nobody has any money and everything like that now and no one can really move across borders. Uh, so lucky for me that that was already underway and that I still managed to get that deal in because otherwise I would be screwed. So it's a massive uh, load off actually getting the money for that car. Um, I've been sort of counting on it, so um, as much as it's very sad to see it go, it's it's a necess it's a necessity uh, for that to happen. So uh, sad times. Anyway, it was awesome to finally meet Luke in person, have a chat to him. Uh, we didn't obviously film anything uh, because there's nothing worth filming going on. It's just a sale of a car. But anyway, had to head to Luke's channel and uh, support Luke there. It's a it's hard time for Luke because they just. Uh, sort of bankrolled and spent so much money on the track doing that bank and getting everything sort of ready for the next couple of months and then they've now been told to shut down for a minimum four weeks from the government so and they have no idea when they're going to be opening again so uh, Luke's another one of us where he's sort of in the same boat where he's sort of lucky that he's got YouTube even though it's not much compared to other businesses and that sort of thing it's still something so go head over to Luke's channel and give it a, give it a view give it a watch uh, he's usually up to some pretty cool stuff but yeah, fingers crossed that Archie's back open again ASAP. So we can all start going there and having some fun. And hopefully uh, by the time they're open again, uh, the old uh, LS R31's ready to rip. So it'd be pretty cool to take it down there once they're open again. Uh, particularly once these people come over and uh, driving my old car there as well. It'd be cool to be there and sort of be able to drive with them, them in my old car and uh, me and Rex in a, a newer, new R31 build. So anyway. End of an era, again, <laughs> second era, so yeah, see how we go. Right, oh guys, pretty full on day, so uh, I've just come back up from Brizzy, uh, from Archerfield. Uh, I've gone to Repco, I've picked up Zach's clutch and the rest of the stuff that I needed from Repco for Zach's car. So I've got a T3 gasket there for him that he um, didn't get with his gasket kit. There's a few other little things, bits, bips and bobs that he needed, uh, and a filler and some oil and stuff like that. And Rex actually today, uh, ended up driving down to uh, East Coast Engine Center. Uh, he wasn't gonna come to the coast, but he had to vote anyway, so he decided to come down. So he went to get all the stuff from the, sh the machine shop. So Rex has the flywheel in the head, plus obviously the small block stuff that I took there the other day for Rex. 
Um, so yeah, Rex has collected all that today. Now I've got everything from Repco we need. So now I'm just taking my trailer to drop it at my mate's place. He's gonna borrow it for the weekend. And then uh, hopefully next week, um, when it's time for the trailer to go back out there, I'll be able to load up uh, Adam's Cressy and take it out and we'll be able to get it on the rollers and put a tune on it and get it pretty much sorted. So that's the plan. So I'm gonna go drop this trailer off and then I'm gonna go to the bank, deposit this money so I can go home and pay a whole mess of overdue bills that I gotta pay. So <laughs> uh, fun afternoon. But anyway, it's been a big day. Sort of glad to have it sold as much as it's sad. I think I've said it a million times, but anyway, it's, uh, it is what it is. So on to the next one, on to the LS31 and on to the dyno. So can't argue with that. Anyway, thanks for watching. It's gonna be it for today because the rest of the day is not that exciting. Uh, smear, smear, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Guys, catch you later.